Hey guys, Benjamin here from Lean Strong Fitness and Wellness. Uh, today I've got kind of two combo questions and I'm going to mix into one for you today. So the first is, is it better to do cardio with weight training in the same session or should they be broken up or does it matter? And the second one is, how do you combine different types of exercise, including like yoga and stretching for basically the maximum benefit? So first of all, in regards to when you should do your cardio, should it be in the same session? Should it be before? Should it be after? Um, generally speaking, best practice is that you want to do the most neurologically demanding exercises first. And that's basically a fancy way of saying you want to do the hardest stuff first that requires the most focus and the most concentration. So for most of the people we're working with who are typically in their 40s, if not 50s and 60s, the biggest bang for your buck and the most important exercises are the strength exercises. So aside from obviously a good warm up, one of the first things you wanna do in your workout is your primary strength things. So these would be things like squats, lunges, presses, rows, anything that's going to help you build and retain muscle, um, not just for aesthetic benefits, but also for strength, quality of life, and it'll actually also improve your energy. So with that being said, once you have the most important st stuff done first, um, usually I would then try to put any cardio exercise at the end because the reality is you can almost always do a few minutes on a bike or a rower or you know a treadmill or go for a jog whatever you're into um, even if you're not like the most mentally fresh but you probably don't want to work on getting stronger and lifting heavier, heavier weights after you're fatigued from cardio because you're going to be a little bit more tired, a little bit less coordinated, and honestly, just a little bit of a greater chance of getting hurt. And we, above all, want to minimize the risk of injury. So in regards to the first question, option one is you can do your cardio and strength training in the same session, but I would almost always do your cardio at the end for all the reasons I mentioned. And second, if you like to break it up, you can absolutely do cardio on your off days. Um, a quick note on that, I'm generally a bigger fan of low intensity cardio. Um, so you might see like HIIT, H-I-I-T, and LISS, L-I-S-S. LISS is low intensity steady state. So these would be things like going for a walk or a hike or a relatively easy jog or going at an easy pace where you could basically, um, you're not completely running out of breath and a good indicator would be you can hold a conversation while you're doing it. So like going for a power walk with a friend is totally low intensity steady state. If, if you're doing, <clears throat> excuse me, high intensity interval training, be aware that if you do that on your off day um, and you really push hard, your body's going to have a little bit of a hard time recovering from it. This is one of the reasons why I don't recommend people do intervals like six times a week, like some places offer. Generally speaking, if you're going to do interval training, I would start with like once a week on an off day or at the end of a workout. So low intensity, steady state, you can do after a workout or on off days, it's really easy to recover from and actually can help you recover faster. That's why one of its key benefits. If you're doing high intensity training, um, I would absolutely do it at the end of the session. And if you're gonna do it on off days, I would do like once a week and just see how your body responds. Now with a similar question in regards to like, how do I combine different modalities of exercise into a week or a session? Um, there's kind of a few different buckets. So first we have like mobility and flexibility work. Second, we have core, and these two are very intertwined. Third, we have strength and muscle building. And fourth is we have cardio. So when it comes to stretching, um, one of the biggest rules of thumb is frequency is more important than intensity. Meaning that stretching really hard once a week isn't going to give you the same benefit of stretching moderately hard for less time more fre frequently. That's why in our programs, we always mix in all types of exercise into one session. You've got a bit of, a bit of cardio, um, which can be just from supersetting exercises. It doesn't mean you have to go on the treadmill. This is coming from someone who refuses to go on the treadmill. Um, but we like to use mobility as like active rest. So let's say you're gonna do like a set of lunges and then you're gonna do a set of modified push-ups. Then we like to pair in a mobility exercise because instead of sitting for two minutes waiting for the next set, that mobility exercise is a low enough intensity and it doesn't fry you or fatigue you that you can do that while you're resting and get a more efficient workout. Plus, you've also got the benefit of doing more mobility more frequently. I know there's lots of folks out there who like to stretch and make that a dedicated thing and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But if you're someone who's been dealing with some mobility challenges and you've been stretching, you know, every Saturday morning, but nothing else aside from that, just be aware your benefits are going to be limited. 
because you're going to get nice benefits and mobility and flexibility on Saturday. But then as the week goes on, you're losing those benefits. And then your next mobility session is a week later. So you're kind of always doing the same wave. Versus if you're doing more frequent mobility, you're getting a little bit more flexible and you only lose a bit, then a bit more flexible and you only lose a bit. And you're now kind of improving as my fake little finger graph here um, is going up. So when to do mobility in a session? Um, almost always you want to do a good chunk of it at the beginning of your session. Um, and you know, I don't even love the term warm up. I love the term movement preparation because we are preparing for the movements that you're going to do. And considering most people are sitting at a desk like I am right now, most of the day, getting mobile is just a, good, a really good way to counteract the effects of sitting all day before you went to work out. And if you work out in the morning, it's a great way to account, counter the effects of being a little bit tight and stiff in the morning before you work out in the morning. Um, from there, the next best option is to integrate it into your workout. So like I said, you do a set of lunges, then a set of push-ups, and then you do like an upper or lower mod the upper or lower body mobility exercise. Because when you sprinkle a few of those out throughout your session, all of a sudden you got like 10 minutes of mobility, maybe even 15, kind of accidentally because you were using it during your rest time. So it's not just a better use of your time, but you get that frequency benefit I talked about um, earlier. Um, lastly, there's absolutely nothing wrong with doing mobility at the, at the end of a session, um, but I've been in fitness long enough to see the pendulum swing both ways and back again. So way back when, static stretching was the best option. It's what everybody recommended. Static stretching is when you hold a stretch for 30 to 60 seconds and you just hold that position. And without getting too science-y, there's some receptors in your muscle that after a certain amount of time, let your brain know, okay, chill out. And you'll get a bit of a benefit from that static stretching, but it tends to be temporary. Um, and it also can actually lower your level of strength. So this doesn't mean if you stretch, you're going to get weaker, but if you did it like a really intense stretching session before a workout, the research shows that you'll actually be a little bit less strong so it can hinder performance. More recently, um, you've probably seen dynamic stretching. So dynamic stretching would be the opposite. Instead of holding a position for whatever, 30 to 60 seconds, you're going to be like doing multiple reps. So if you're doing a mobility exercise, you would like do a rep, hold the stretch for two seconds, but then you do the same thing, maybe 10 to 15 times. You've probably seen people doing like arm swings or leg swings. That's a really good example of dynamic stretching. Dynamic stretching tends to be better. Um, one, it doesn't seem to have the same decrease in strength or performance. So it's fine to do at the beginning of a session. That's why we always include it in all of our warm ups and movement preps for our sessions but also tends to help you like get used to getting into that position because you don't just want to be mobile. You want to be strong within a full range of motion. So the best analogy I have is pretend we've got like a car speedometer and it can only go this far. This is your range of motion that you can move through. But let's say you do lots and lots of stretching and now you get your mobility out a little bit wider and you can have a greater range of motion. Well, there's a gap. There's this little bit from where you were before to where your new mobility is that's where you need to build strength if you want to retain that range of motion because your brain is going to tell your body that if you can get into a position but you're not strong there it's going to like your nervous system is going to restrict what you're able to do because if you get into a position where you don't have strength your risk of injury just went way up that's part of the reason after a really intense stretching session or a long stretching session you'll notice you have a lot of really good mobility benefits but over time they start to fade if you don't um, if you don't build strength within that range of motion the mobility just doesn't stick and that's probably part of the reason why there's a lot of folks out there who seem to stretch regularly but don't get any more mobile the reality is for those people you want to continue to do some of the stretching but you want to think about locking it in so to speak with um, strength work so the framework i use is release re-lengthen reteach Releasing your muscle would be something like massage or using a lacrosse ball or a foam roller. And due to a whole bunch of sciencey stuff I'm not going to get into, it lets your muscles loosen up and get into a better position. Then you want to re-lengthen through stretching, preferably dynamic stretching. And then you want to reteach. And reteaching is basically locking it in or anchoring the mobility with strength. So examples of that would be like if I just did a bunch of pec stretches. So I did lacrosse ball in my pecs. I then did some pec stretches. I want to re I want to lock that in by doing some upper back work because that'll help me get out of this hunched over posture. It'll tell my body like, oh, my pecs can be here and I do have the strength. So when you um, 
reteach, it can be a mixture of getting strength through the muscles you just strengthened or using the antagonist muscles. And antagonist is the, the fancy term for the opposite muscles. So your biceps and triceps are antagonists. Generally speaking, your uh, pecs and upper back are antagonists. Your glutes and your hip flexors are antagonists. So it is another example, in addition to uh, stretching pecs and then strengthening back, you could release your quads and hip flexors with the foam roller. You could then lengthen your hip flexors with a hip flexor stretch, and then you can reteach it or anchor it in by doing some glute work. And that way, instead of trying to go from like this much range of motion to this much range of motion and then having it regress, you're gonna make small incremental changes, but it's going to last because you're locking it in with strength. So I'm aware that got a little bit long. I'm aware that got a little bit sciencey. So thanks for bearing with me for those who made it this far in the video. Um, I'm trying to kind of, as you're, as you're probably understanding, trying to shed some light on the idea that when you do stretching does matter, generally dynamic at the beginning and throughout. And if you want to do some static stretching, there's nothing wrong with that, you, but you can do it on the end and off days. But to really make your stretching fit, you want to lock it in with some strength work. And that's part of the huge benefit of mixing the mobility in with the strength work throughout the workout. By default, the way we structure our programs, you're always going to be getting some relengthening and reteach, which is going to be way more beneficial than just doing stretching on an off day and then not doing any strength work afterwards. So quick recap. First, I'm just looking at my notes here. First, when should you do your cardio? Generally speaking, off days or at the end of your workouts. Um, basically don't do it right before. You don't want to go into a strength session, which is your biggest bang for your buck when you're already fatigued. Um, second, when should you do your stretching? Also similar answer during your session or at the end of your session. And of course with both, you can do it on off days, but again, strength work is kind of the anchor that holds everything together. So if you know me very well at all, you know, I'm not a meathead by any stretch, but strength work is what gives us that health quality of life and longevity. It's the reason that despite tearing my MCL, I've been able to get back a full range of motion and be 99% pain-free. It was good mobility and good strength. When I fractured a vertebrae in my low back, it wasn't just strength in my core and strength in my back, but it was getting good work capacity through having that strength work, through having good mobility in my upper body and through my hip flexors. And I know there's probably a lot of people out there who are dealing with, dealing with similar things. And you know, the end of the day answer kind of is you want to do a little bit of a mix of everything throughout the same session, but structured in an intelligent way where you're getting your movement prep, your strength work, and then your strength work mixed in with mobility and core, and then your cardio at the end or on the off days. And that tends to give you optimal results versus the norm of, you know, I know I've seen stuff where it's like Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I'm going to do strength stuff. And then Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, I'm going to run. And then on Sundays, I'm going to do mobility. And that looks really, really appealing in a calendar. And the reality is um, it doesn't really work that well. And it was a lot more work versus if you were to do Monday, Wednesday, Friday strength sessions, but you mixed in your mobility and you did some cardio or conditioning at the end, you're going to get the same, if not better results in like probably half the time. And I know if you've got any time limitations on your workouts out there, um, being efficient while still getting great results is super important. So thanks for bearing with me this long. And if you have any other questions, comment on this video or shoot me an email because I'm excited to keep more coming. Thank you.